arms for you My soul thirsts for you Show me the place When I can go to meet you Underneath your waterfalls Deep will call to deep Rappers and breakers Will wash over me I long for you in a dry and weary land Take me into your presence Into your courts Lord, I'm longing to worship Face to face I will bow at your throne Cause I was made for you alone
Isaiah 44 and verse 3 says, I will pour water upon him who is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessing upon your descendants. Let me read that again. For I will pour water upon him who is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour out my spirits upon your offspring and my blessing upon your descendants. This is a, a word of God this morning that we can take unto ourselves that God will pour out living water upon him that's thirsty. You know, Jesus is come unto me, all you who are thirsty. Come and drink of the living water and you'll never thirst again. The secret here is who receives the water. God says he will pour his water and there's a criteria that we must meet if we desire to be filled with the glory of God, if we desire to get the water that flows, and the Bible talks about a river of glory, a river of life, a river of blessing that flows from the very throne room of heaven. Amen? And he says that I want to plant you beside that river so that there will be plenty of water that your roots will go down and you'll draw that you'll never thirst again, that you'll have more than you need, that you'll have more than abundance, that you might grow into oaks and trees of righteousness. Amen? That you would be solid, you would become the planting of the Lord. Why does God want to plant us? He's planted us here. We were, we were brought to birth in this world. We were planned, we were destined, we were created, we were ordained. Amen? And we were purposed by God. We are the planting of the Lord to bring forth fruit and to bring forth a harvest unto the glory of God. In fact, he says that you might bring forth, that you might shine forth my glory. You often hear me quote it, um, Isaiah 63, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. There's a glory in God that God, that He has purposed us and has planned for us to walk in each day of our lives. Adam and Eve walked in that glory. Amen. When I, the Bible talks about God, now, you know, you cannot uh, dwell or even be in the presence of God without the glory, His glory, have an effect upon your life. And I read in Genesis how in the cool of every evening, God came down and walked with Adam and Eve. These guys shone with the glory. These guys, guys radiated the glory of God. In fact, it was the glory of God that clothed them. They had no need for these top clothes because the glory of God was upon them. It's the glory that, that covered them as a, a covering, a banner, a protection, a keeping that was upon Adam and Eve. But when they sinned and disobeyed God, that glory was departed. And God shed the first blood and he shed, he killed an animal, and the first blood was shed as a covering. And that's all the sacrifice ever was, was a covering to cover our nakedness, cover our guilt, cover our sin before God. And of course, we know right through the Old Testament how there was sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice that the law was introduced to expose our unrighteousness, to expose our guilt, to expose how unworthy we are. And sacrifice was given to cover our sin. It never wiped it out. It never washed us clean. It just was a covering to, to keep it from God, God. And instead, so we exchange this glory of God for the glory of man, amen? For the glory of clothes that we, we've created. And ever since that time in the Garden of Adam and Eve, Man has desired and longed to get that glory back. Amen. And so we see, just look at Jesus on Mount Transfiguration when he was with Peter and, and a couple of the other disciples. And he went to the mountain and the glory of God came upon him and his whole being uh, shone forth, was radiant with the very power and the light and the glory of God. Amen. Look at Moses. When Moses went into the tent of meeting, when he went up on Mount Sinai, he came down, he came out of the tent and, and out of the glory and the presence of God and he placed a veil over his face because the glory was so intense. When you're in the presence of God, the glory is what he desires to flood our soul and to fill us with that, that to radiate his glory upon our lives. 
And so we know that in the very, um, he speaks to us, says, now it's time to arise. Amen. In fact, just before, as I read in Isaiah 44, in, in Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19, I'm reading the Amplified Version. It says, so um, uh, do not earnestly remember the former things, neither consider the things of old, because I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Do you not know it? Will you not give heed to it? I'll even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert places. Here's God speaking in life where there is no life. Here's God speaking light into darkness. Here's God bringing his blessing where there's been curse. Here's God breaking everything that is un ungodly, everything that is of the of demonic realm and lifting us into the heavenly realm, into his glory, into his presence. Amen. You know, I, I uh, often quote the scripture where Paul talks about taking hold of the purposes of God in my life. There's one thing he desires is to press on and take hold of that for which Christ took hold of him. In other words, the purpose that God has for him, that he desires to walk in that that will. He desires to live out the purpose, the calling of God in his life. But he says, there's one thing that hinders me if I let it. There's one thing that I've got to let go of if I want to step into the fullness of God. You know, because we're born into this world which is full of sin. And, you know, as we, from the time of birth right through to our age now, the devil comes against us seeking to devour us and to stand against us and to um, overcome uh, us in many areas of our lives and so there's all this rubbish this baggage that we collect and we pick up along the way amen and God says you've got to let it go Paul says there's one thing I do I forget the past there's one thing I must do if I'm going to move on to the future I've got to forget the past amen hallelujah in fact the scripture talks about without a vision the people perish Without a revelation of God that we'll grow tired and weak and weary and we'll, we'll lose our way, we'll lose our strength. But he that waits upon the Lord shall rise up and his strength shall be renewed like that and he shall soar and rise up and like as on the wings of an eagle. And the Bible talks about him being running and walking and not facing and not becoming weary but there's a, you know there's a band called Petra that I was brought up and listening to and they wrote a song I've got my second wind amen this is the second wind of God this is the breeze of the Holy Spirit this is the Holy Spirit being poured out upon mankind it says for the last days I shall pour out my Holy Spirit I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh hallelujah and some people say that that gifts of the Holy Spirit, that the power of the Holy Spirit is not for today, it was just for the apostles. Well, how come the apostles said it's for you and your offspring and your generation after generation after generation after generation? How come back in the Old Testament that God said, oh, pour my spirit upon you and your offspring? Amen. So this is something that even in the last days, and I believe right now, we're living in the very last few seconds Amen. Before the coming of the Lord, if we were to put it in perspective of, of eternity, that, you know, the trumpet's been sounded and, and the Lord's left heaven right now. He's on his way to earth to receive those who are living for him. And Paul says that in the twinkling of an eye, we'll be changed. Amen. We'll be caught up and we'll meet him in the clouds. Hallelujah. We'll be snatched away. The rapture will be snatched away into heavenly places and forever we will be with the Lord. Hallelujah. And so back in Isaiah, he speaks about saying, guys, you've got to forget the past. You've got to not even consider. You know, I believe often we're our own worst enemy. That we, you know, if we're having a bad day, we sit down and just have a little bit of a sulk or a little bit of a, I'm feeling sorry for myself session. And that's exactly what the devil's looking for because we open the door and in he gets. And you know, what's that old saying? Everybody hates me. Nobody loves me. I'm going to eat some worms. <laughs> Fat one, skinny. No, we won't go there. It's okay. <laughs> Amen. There's even some witchy grubs before. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you know, don't we, we go there? It's so easy to just fall into it. That's what it is. It's a snare of the fowler. It's a trap. 
You know, we're walking along and all of a sudden we fall into this pit. But thank God that David says that he lifts me up out of the miry clay. That's what that stuff is. It's miry clay. And if you're going to step in it, you know, then you're going to, you're going to, you know, slop around in this mud and this clay. It's going to hold you fast. But he says he lifts me up out of the miry clay. He sets my feet upon the rock solid ground. And we need to understand that we do not even give the devil the time of day in our thoughts, in our imagination, because that's where it starts, right here. Amen. It starts right in our thoughts. And if we entertain that and allow it to stay, then it drops down into our heart and then it becomes a part of us and then we, we're in trouble. So the secret is, is to get your mind, the Bible talks about renewing our mind in the washing and cleansing it in the in the word of god some people say i'm a christian i say when have you read your bible last or oh, i read it last month sometimes or i open it you know once a week because that's you know how do you go every day without coming to the table and eating food <laughs> some of us can't go more than you know a few hours and we get hungry <laughs> Uh, well, how would you go a whole day or two days or three days? You'd be complaining, you'd be whinging, your stomach would be telling you, I need something here. Hey, you've forgotten me. And that's what God says. Hey, if we go time without the Word of God and without being on our knees in prayer, then that's exactly what's happening. We are not looking after our, our, our spiritual body. <laughs> We're not feeding our spiritual man. Hallelujah. Behold... I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Do you not know it? Will you not give heed to it? You know, God can bring about a, a great move and can pour out His Holy Spirit and people miss it. People miss it. I was in, uh, last month, uh, I was in Sri Lanka and the very last meeting we had uh, there, the power of God fell. It just, it's just like a wave came through the place from probably half an hour and the glory of God fell and people were just all over the place. And, and it was just a, a real move of God for a good half an hour. People's lives were just touched. They were on their knees. They were crying. They were weeping. They were pouring out before God. Uh, and, and God moved. He poured out His Holy Spirit. And within half an hour of the close of the meeting, the pastor was whinging and complaining because he wanted another 50 bucks or something. And I said, I said, I looked and I said, be very careful. You do not lose that which God has done here tonight. I nearly, actually, I nearly thumped him, really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I nearly laid hands with him, in, you know, and... Uh, <clears throat> But here it is that God's saying, I'm doing a new thing. Right before his eyes, God was touching his people, his church, and all he could think about was money. Or how much out of pocket he was. You know? And and God's saying that he's doing something new. It's springing forth now. And then he asks the question. He says, can't you feel it? Can't you sense it? You know, I've been in meetings where the glory of God is just falling, and I know that. As a matter of fact, one of the meetings, uh, in fact, it was one of these same meetings, I think it must have been the night before, that the glory of God fell, and I just knew God wanted every single person in that place to be healed. In fact, I had faith, and I knew, and I believed, it was more than belief. You know, well, that's what belief is, isn't it? Faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the, the total uh, knowing that God has done it. And I just knew that there wasn't going to be one person going to leave that place, that crusade, that meeting, that was not going to be healed. That not one sick. You know, that's what happened when the people of Israel left Egypt. God broke their slavery. God let, set them free out of captive, captivity. Um, broke their chains. He led them out of Egypt into the promised land or desired to lead them straight into the promised land. That's another story. But he led them out of Egypt, out of bondage, and you know, who, who knows, when God does something, He does it perfectly. <laughs> God doesn't muck up. God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't do something half-heartedly. He doesn't leave anything incomplete. He 
you say, oh, I, I just, I haven't got it, what it takes. You say, oh, I, I'm not good enough, I'm incomplete. Hey, did God make you? Yes. Did God make you incomplete? No. So my Bible tells me, Paul tells us in the epistles that God has given us everything by the power of His Holy Spirit, by the virtue of His grace. He has bestowed upon us everything that is required to live a godly life for Jesus Christ. To live holy before God. Jesus gives this commandment, be holy as I am holy. How holy was Jesus? <laughs> How holy was Jesus? God's not going to tell us to do something that's impossible, isn't he? And Paul says that everything that is required, you've heard me say it again, if I, you know, I think you've heard me say an illustration before that if I invite a plumber to my house and he comes with just his clothes and no tools, nothing, he's not going to get the job done. When the plumber comes, he's got his belt, he's got his wrench, he's got his, his oxy welder, he's got his hacksaw, he's got his little glue thing and his gun, and he's got, he's got all the tools of the trade, you know, and you sit there and you watch him and you think, mate, I mucked around for hours trying to do that, and he pulls this snazzy little tool out and goes, and it's done. <laughs> because he's got the right tools. Amen? He's got the right, how would you be trying to lift up a car without a jack? You'd be working pretty hard, you'd be busting your guts, and you'd probably damage yourself. But with the right tools, the job has become easy. God has given us His tools. God has given us the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God has empowered you, and He says, Arise and shine. You are complete. <laughs> In fact, when we come through the cross of Jesus, we're, before that, we're incomplete. Because sin has made its toll. Sin has, the devil, the Bible says, the devil comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. Uh, but Jesus came to bring life, an abundant life, everlasting life, fullness of life. The full measure of life is made available unto us. And when we come through the cross, the blood of Jesus washes us, cleanses us. You know that it breaks the curse of sin. See, Paul, people misquote all these scriptures with Paul. And this is what I believe Pete talks about saying, gee, Paul, I wish you'd, you know, he's... <laughs> Remember what Peter says? He says, Paul writes some stuff that's really hard to understand. Paul writes some stuff that gets you all confused. And I reckon that's one of the passages the scripture is talking about, where Paul says that, oh, woe, oh, woe is me. I, you know, I, I do the things I don't want to do and the very things I want to do, I, I can't do. And, you know, what, and, he, and he runs through all this stuff saying that, you know, we can't get, do the stuff we want to, you know, the sin is, you know, is in, our, in us and we can't get rid of it and it controls us. And, it, and it, you know, he goes on for quite a spiel. What Paul's doing here, he's painting a picture of the man before the blood of Jesus. Before he's washed in the blood of Jesus. He's painting a picture of who we are before the curse of sin is broken. Because if you read on, Paul says, oh, woe is me. Oh, woe. And then he stops and says, oh, who will save me? And then he says, oh, blessed be God. He is my saviour, my salvation. And you read on and then it goes on. And then he says, guys, stop sinning. You can't sin. In fact, he says, the Holy Spirit comes to sanctify us, body, soul, and spirit. That's the whole, that's, that's us, all part of us. That we can, we can step in to this holiness, this sanctification. And when the blood of Jesus was shed, and we come and surrender unto God and we are born again into His family out of darkness into lights. This curse of sin is broken over our life. What does that mean? It means that the curse of sin is broken over our life. What does that mean? It means the curse of sin is broken over our life. It means that the outcome, the working of sin, the curse is broken. That we are no longer under bondage we are now set free as a child of God. Listen, if we're born again, we're born again. The old life is gone, finished, done. The imperishable human nature, natural seed is dead, killed, gone, finished. And the seed of God is planted in us, which is holy and righteous 
and powerful. In fact, the Bible says that the very same power that raised Jesus from the dead shall also, and it's talking about this mortal body. <laughs> you read it? It says the very same power shall also quicken your mortal bodies. You're struggling in sin, then get in God. <laughs> then get into God. Get step into His presence. Take the Word of God and be washed. Be cleansed. Be sanctified. Get revelation. It's only, you know, we can read and read the Word of God, but unless it drops from here into here, it's just law. And the law kills. But when the Spirit brings revelation, and that is the purpose of the Holy Ghost, Jesus said the Holy Ghost will come and He will illuminate my Word. He will take the Word of the Father and make it known unto you. He will bring unto you remembrance of the Word of God. Hallelujah. And so he says, as you wash yourself, you cleanse yourself in the word of God. Hallelujah. And so he has given us everything that is required. All the tools of the trade are given unto us. The curse of sin. Now what, what also comes under the curse? Well, all the stuff that is not of God. <laughs> Some of the fear, depression, anxiety despair, sickness, disease, all this stuff God has brought. Listen, the blood of Jesus here that has done its job or it hasn't done its job. Amen? And if it hasn't, then who are we? Woe are we, Paul says. We're to be, to be condemned more than anyone else, you know? But the blood of Jesus is powerful. It shall never lose its power. It washes us whiter than snow and breaks the curse of sin upon our life. So we're going to learn to take the Word of God and believe it and receive it and live in it. Hallelujah. Live in it. But to do one of those things, so the devil will come knocking on your door and he'll bring up the past. And you can choose right then and there. Will you receive it or will you slam the door in his face? I advise you to slam the door in his face. Amen. And reject it. Paul says, when you've done everything, just when the devil comes against you, stand firm. And hey, you're on the rock. There's no better foundation. Amen. And once you've done everything to stand, then stand. <laughs> and you think, what I do now, I've done everything. Well, just stand. Just remain. Just walk. Just stay. Just abide. Just keep yourself right where you're in the love of God. Keep yourself under the shadow, under the covering. Hallelujah. And so, Paul, back in Isaiah, Paul's talking about God doing it. Uh, sorry, Isaiah's talking uh, about God doing a new thing. It's springing forth now. It's happening now. And he's telling us, don't miss it. <laughs> don't, don't lose it. Do you recognize it? Jesus said he, he came to... Uh, turn, turn the hearts of his people back to the Father. And, and Jesus said, you missed the time of your visitation. This is the hour. This is the hour. This is the day. You know, right now we're living in the favor of God. These are the times of the favor of God. From the time Jesus came until now, we are living under the favor. And we are still living in the day of favor of God. But that will not always be the way. Because the Bible says he's going to lift his favor off the earth and judge the earth and set forth a, a seven-year period of trial of tribulation that the world has never known where he would judge the world. Hallelujah. We need to get our lives right. We need to make sure that we are walking right. We need to make sure that we are watching, we are waiting, we are ready. We have extra oil in our lamps. Amen. That our lamps are burning bright and that the oil that we are saturated in the oil. You know, the fire, the oil creates a fire. The fire can't burn in a lamp unless it's oil. The oil is the Holy Spirit. We need to keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Paul tells us, keep in step with the Holy Spirit. If you keep in step with the Holy Spirit, then you'll satisfy the desires of the Holy Spirit. If you don't, then you're keeping in step with something else and you'll satisfy those desires. So we need to keep in step. As Isaiah says, perceive it, recognize it, take a hold of it, give heed to it, and, and uh, grab it. 
You've heard me say the, the saying, get under the spout where the glory is coming out. We're going to get under the spout where the glory is coming out. We're going to get where the fire is. We're going to get where the glory is. We're going to get where God's pouring out His water. We're going to get uh, into the flood like Ezekiel. He, you could get into his knee, into his ankles, his knees, his thighs, or he could dive right into the river. And that the river. So the problem is if you're dabbling around the shore, you end up in the eddies and the backwash. And that's where all the foam and the gunk and all the, all the, all the garbage, you know, the river has, you know, often has its own way of cleansing itself from these back, what do you call them, back eddies, back eddies, backwash. You know, and you go in there and it stinks because the water's actually, all the garbage has been frothed in and fallen back into the, its cleanse and stuff. And if we're just dabbing into, you know, the things of, you know, what we want to do and we're not really getting right into it, we're mucking around and trying to get the best of God and the best of the world and stuff, we, that's where, exactly where we are. We're in the, in the mud. <laughs> Amen. But God wants us right in the flow. God wants us in the mainstream of his river of life, which will take us, which will sweep us in the direction where he desires for us to go. Hallelujah. For I will even make a way in the wilderness. You're going through a hard time, rejoice. <laughs> Paul says rejoice. If you go through trials and tribulations, if you're going through the wilderness, then hey, he took the people through the wilderness. He took his Israel through the wilderness, but you know, in the wilderness God was. Hallelujah. In fact, he led them by night by a pillar of fire. And you know, it's in the wilderness, it can be in the in the desert places at night, it can be freezing. So he had his own heater of fire that he kept them warm in the wilderness at night time. In the freezing cold, they had their own radiator, it was gone. At night in the desert, it's pitch black while the fire gives light. He illuminated their path. He gave them light, he gave them warmth. What more do you need? Amen? At night time in the desert, he is there. At daytime in the desert where the sun is blazing down and you, you, you're walking on parched ground and, and you're becoming thirsty and dry and, and the sun is beating, sapping all the life out of you, he's the cloud, the glory cloud. The cloud which gives shade from the heat of the day and takes off the intense pressure. And so it is if you stay in the presence of God, there's his glory, there's his cloud, there's his presence in the wilderness. He says, I will make a way in the wilderness where there is no way. You may say, I just can't see a way out. You might say, I can't see a way through. Well, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. God's with you. Hallelujah. We don't walk by feelings. Paul says, we don't walk by sight. We don't walk by sensation. We don't walk by what is, is round about us. We walk by the word of God. We walk by faith in God. And, and when Peter, when Jesus came to Peter in the storm and walked on the water, the circumstances couldn't have been worse. It was in the midst of a storm. And Peter rose above it, and he didn't look at the circumstances. He looked at Jesus, and he, he walked above the storm. He walked on the water. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Oh, hallelujah. Rivers in desert places. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't we just why don't we just close our eyes right where we are? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me read to you, and I quoted before Isaiah 60, it says, Arise. The Amplified says, Arise from depression and prostration. You've been knocked over, you've been kicked down too many times. Well, get up. God's saying, get up. Arise from the depression and the prostration in which the circumstances have held you, circumstances have kept you, and rise to a new life. Shine. Be radiant with the glory 
of the Lord, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and dense darkness over all the people, but the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you and nations will come to the brightness of your lights. Lift up your eyes round about and see. They gather themselves together. They come unto you from afar, your daughters, your family, those carried in arms. And you shall see and be radiant and your heart shall thrill and tremble with joy at the glorious deliverance of the Lord. Be enlarged because the abundant wealth of the sea shall be turned unto you goes on and talks about a multitude coming unto you and all your flocks and everything you do shall be come unto you and foreigners shall work for you and hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus the glory of God the light of God is risen upon you and I encourage you this morning in fact if you if you just need a fresh touch from the Lord then I invite you just stand right where you are just stand to your feet right now you, you're going through stuff you, you, whatever it is then I invite you just stand right where you are stand to your feet and I'm just going to ask God to touch you right where you stand hallelujah I'll give you a moment Give you a moment. You say, yes, Lord, I, I, I need a touch of this glory right now. I need a refreshing touch of you. Then just stand right now. Don't be afraid. Don't be embarrassed. Don't, be, don't let pride stop you doing anything now. Just stand for God. Say, yes, I need this. Yes, I want this. Lord, I want to step into this river. My God, I want more of you. I want this fresh touch of the water of life poured out. I want this new thing. Lord, I want to recognize this new thing. Lord, I don't want to miss this new thing. My God, I want to step into everything that you have for me. Then just stand your feet right now. It's a fresh surrender. It's a fresh laying down. It's a fresh sacrifice. Oh God, Lord, forgive me for, for being stubborn sometimes. Lord, forgive me for getting led astray. Lord, forgive me for getting caught up in my own world. In the world of Oh, that is round about me. That, that even that I've created in, 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 in whatever it is. Lord, forgive me. Lord, the times I've lost sight and I've been insensitive to, to what you desire for me this day. But Lord, right now, I don't want to miss it. My God, I want to heed it. I want to recognize it. I want to see it. I want to partake in it. I want to take a hold of it. Lord Jesus, use me. Take me for your glory. May God touch everyone that's standing right now. Lord, with a fresh touch of your glory. My God, I speak into every heart, into every circumstance. And Lord, I declare that the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Though there be thick darkness round about you, though tempest and storm come against you, the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. You shall arise and shine. You shall break off the cords that bind. You shall arise out of depression. You shall rise out of the place where you've been held captive. You shall rise from that which has kicked you down and held you back and held you down. You shall rise because the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Thank you, Lord. Do a work right now, my God, in these lives. In the name of Jesus, I break off every bit of complacency. I break off every bit of worldliness, Lord, every bit of laziness. My God, I break off every bit of fear and depression and anxiety. I loose them from you in the name of Jesus right now. And I set you free into the fullness of the kingdom of God and of His righteousness. My God, empower them right now. I ask and I pray, my God, that our eyes would be open unto your vision, 
My Lord, that as we dive into the river, that we will be swept along your direction, not ours, but yours. And we will yield. <laughs> we won't struggle. Sometimes we turn and we think, I miss that back there. I'm going to try and swim back against the current. But we need to just let ourselves be swept along. And God, that you will take us in the direction that you desire. Let us yield to that, Father, I pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah.